Uh, oh. Looks like we made it. <sighs> Look how far we've come now, Chris. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I can't tell. Like, I really wish I had washed my hands before I sat down. Why? I don't know. I just got makeup all over them. I've been fucking traveling all day. Got some, some, they're sticky. Been being borderline offensive to me all morning, oh, but calling me out oh. on the last week of Pride. I know uh, we're <laughs> always starting this. with a fight, but don't it's like the this. last week of Pride, and you're calling me out after saying that I was being misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like if anyone supports women, it's me. Yeah, it's true. He keeps trying to get me pregnant. And there's... <laughs> so Chris had sent a, a, an ovulating... What would no, that be? Chris sent like a picture of fallopian tubes and... And they were happy. And, and then, then once they, they started mad. bleeding, they were like, uh, well, wouldn't you be mad if you were bleeding? I am bleeding and I am mad. So... Lizzie said that I guess Lizzie got mad at Chris and said well that's super misogynistic and Chris had to do a public apology on the group text and I said are we not allowed to depict real life stories anymore what's going on because it's not like if I was bleeding out of anywhere I would be hurt and I would be a little bit mad that I was hurting this is the most so, empathetic you've ever been but it's because I'm defending myself for <laughs> being having like well and honestly sticking up for Chris and myself because then you were like I'm leaving and I was like I just want to know why we can't talk about real life stories anymore. No, we can talk about real life stories. Let's talk about real life stories. Okay, the real life stories is your insane writer on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie was on the way back from the airport. No, and no, then, then, what no. What do you mean? No. no. I have been up since 348 in this the morning. Is your, I mean, Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. I will be heard. Not another misogynist shutting down a woman. <laughs> Fuck the patriarchy. Keychain on the ground. I get on an airplane at 5 a.m. Okay, I'm I, squished I, between two men who refuse to close their goddamn fucking legs. We'll get into that next week. Point well, being, you know, I have no. been up and in a horrible situation for hours. I saw a and comment. And this bitch texts me before even saying something nice and says, Elizabeth, do your makeup in the car. Well, that's because you guys, it, it was a delayed start. It and was I want to make sure. It was a snappy text. And then I said, if I'm doing my makeup in the car, I'm going to need a water, a liquid IV, and a coffee when I arrive. No, no, Ask no. Chris what she he She said, wants. I want a cup filled with half liquid IV, a separate cup with only water water and a coffee waiting upon my arrival <laughs> and i was just like damn girl why can't you just have the liquid iv and once you finish that put more water well, in the because cup we're rushing i don't you have time two to dishes I, yeah because i don't have time to fill a cup you're telling shane all about your script i think you had time to fill a cup while i didn't know talking. i was gonna have that time <laughs> i did not know and so let me see also it's so nice to see you it's good to see you too it's been <laughs> a while <laughs> I thought we were going to have to do this from the airport, but I'm so glad to be here for 20 minutes. You know, and I guess there was a comment that stuck with me from last week, and it was like, normally I love this podcast. I love to tune in to escape my life, but lately it's just all been complaining. Oh, I've got nothing to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can bust. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have nothing to complain about. <laughs> well, I spent two and a half hours cleaning this fireplace behind it's us yesterday. So, so clean. So that we could film in here because, and then I went on top of the roof and because they're coming, there's this little thing up there mm -hmm. that I guess the moths are attracted to and then they all go down there. And because the glass is enclosed, I told you last week, it's like a moth aquarium in there. There's yeah. like a hundred dead ones on the floor. So it's like... Mm -hmm. R.I.P. It's their grave That's site. One too and many then there's moths. like 20 in there flying, but there's nothing you can do because they're locked in there. Mm -hmm. So I have to open it. But like to open that glass for me to pull out that glass and have all 20 fly at my face at the same time <laughs> and brave them and try to get them out of this house was quite the production. Yeah. And then I was like, well, me just cleaning it isn't going to solve the problem. I got to go solve the problem where they're getting in. Yeah. So I got my ass up on that roof. Yeah, girl. And I put a trash bag. <laughs> over the chimney where they're getting in and i taped it in and i was is like is that gonna backfire i called my dad about it I yeah was what like, did bruce say is this safe I and he's like well absolutely don't turn it on when there's a trash bag taped yeah, to the top and i was like it's die, not right? in working condition anyway and even if it was i don't know how to turn it on so we're fine Ugh, let's hope <laughs> but we're moth free in there hell yeah but the moss and the rest of the house are excited to meet you 
Wow, so that whole little back thing was just full of moths. I wish I took a picture, but I was so gross. And I normally eat dinner Were right they in alive? this position. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're alive until they and die. And they're dead. So, so it's both. They flutter around in there until they die. So the whole you couldn't even see the bottom of it <laughs> because it was just a graveyard of dead moths. And then the flying around ones were and still flying around. And you cleaned them all around. out? Uh-huh. With what, your hands? The vacuum in my hands. The vacuum got clogged up because of it. Like, there were too That's many. That's fucked up. <laughs> and I'm, like, gagging because there's like there was a bunch of wood in there, That's too. Fucked up. So I put gloves on to remove the wood, and then more were, like, emerging from the ground. And I'm, like, spraying them with this bug killer, like, gotcha. And then they're flying into my face. Yeah. I'm screaming. Shane's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Where was Shane? And honestly, well, he was like in and out of helping me, but sometimes like his help isn't as needed because he screams so much <laughs> that then I am like me and thinking Joe. something else is happening that's crazy. And then he's like, ah! and I'm like, ah! and I'm like, okay, this is making this way harder than yeah. just letting them fly into my face and doing it myself. But he tried his best. He God was helping. Love it. Bless his heart. And then when I went to go get to, I mean, this really is like. Colorado is being so wild right now with so many elements. It's like raining more than usual. Mm -hmm. It's like... It I do feel a peaceful vibe, though, I have to say. I know you're a little chaotic right now, but when we came in, I was like, I get it. No, it's beautiful, it. but the weather is just a lot of weather. It's a <laughs> lot of weather. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I'm dealing with the moss. I, there's no end in sight. Like, they've stopped at my parents' house, but they're still going strong here. Like, last night, I almost just, like, I, I threw, I, like, had to, whatever you call when you give up. You threw in the towel? I almost had to throw in the towel on getting ready for bed because you turn on the light in the bathroom and they all start flying at your face. And like my getting ready for bed, I'm sorry, now I'm complaining after I was like, this show's a bunch of complaining. But it's like more comedic than anything. My favorite because... is you saying, I did, what is it? What is that saying? <laughs> but, but then I just like... My favorite was last week when you were talking to <laughs> You're talking about your alpacas overdosing oh, yeah. on heat. I, <laughs> I've been talking about that to anyone who will listen all week. I know all the comments were about it too, and I was like, "You get what I was trying to say." You get what I mean, because when down. we're virtual, I can't make corrections because it's like, well, what? Like, if there's a bit of a lag, and what am I gonna do? Be like, oh, one second, you mean overheating? <laughs> like, but it killed me in the moment. I was like, "Oh God, baby boy." <laughs> So between the moss and like there were a bunch of tornado warnings this week, <laughs> Shane's like very not used to that growing up in California. Yeah. So like while the rest of the world is still out mowing their lawn, there is a tornado world and Nine News is acting like the world's ending because I right. swear it's like their Super Bowl when something like this happens. Oh, they because love it. They just like to tell you that the end of the world is upon us. And I'm well, it down means there. we stay watching because we're like, well, when's it coming? And he has us down in the basement because he's too afraid <laughs> to be up. So I have all five animals down there while he's free. <laughs> Freaking out. I'm watching Kathy Sabin talk on Nine News, and I'm just like, is this going to be the end of us? Am I going to have to tether us to one of these poles so that we can survive? <laughs> and then, like, next thing you know, once the moth ends, it's going to be like winter again. And I don't know if I'm a girl made for the elements. No, I don't think you are. I think I'm... it's very clear you're not made for the elements, bro. <laughs> You're a fragile little flower and you need to be in Calabasas, in the Calabasas Mountains. You can, for some reason, you don't have any of these feelings about rattlesnakes, though. <gasps> oh Did you God. have a rattlesnake here? Okay. Yesterday, I had the biggest jump scare of my life. It was just a poo in a toilet, but you thought it was a snake? <laughs> no. I was walking the dogs, and of course, like the one moment I go, I'm listening to a podcast, I go down to like skip the ads, because no one listens to ads, but thank you so much to all of our sponsors. Make sure you're supporting them. Even if you're not listening to the ads, go to the description also, and click the link. If I'm reading the ads, I think they're very funny. <laughs> you can read the ads today, girly. We have some good ads. Some of my favorite, including SeatGeek and HelloFresh. Oh, shit. Um, but I'm walking the dogs, and of course, like the one moment I go down and I'm like skipping the ads, I literally come one. Like if I would have stepped one more step, I would have stepped on the biggest snake I have ever oh, seen. That makes me sick. And I start screaming and Riley was ready to play with the snake. What? I looked down. At least it wasn't a rattler, but it was big. I don't know what kind of Riley big was going to play with it. Of course. I thought dogs were genetically engineered to be like, fuck a snake. Not fuck Riley. It. Because really. I literally just do this at my dumbass dogs and they're like, kill it, kill it dead. And I'm uh. like, it's your mom. It's your mom's hand, bro. And they go, like, hey. And I literally just have my hand going like this. And Bubs and Icky both go ape shit, like protect mom. And it's like, it's my arm, bro. But they don't know. <laughs> Teaches me a lesson to stop to pay attention when I'm walking yeah, because it was really scary. I have a picture of it. You guys can let me know what kind of snake it is. I don't, because it doesn't have a rattler. Like I was no longer was scared. Black? 
it was like yellow and tan i'm sick but he was pretty i mean they it doesn't look as big as it was because no that's it's too big not but look i don't even that. want your phone to touch me when it's and its on the tongue screen. was out and it's like honestly i think it's bad news i think that's a bad news snake it was such a thick that makes me want to barf just thinking yeah. about it and i'm out there screaming and of course yeah. there it was at a four-way stop and of course there were two cars at the four-way stop while i'm like jumping and screaming like my alpacas there was a huge rattlesnake on frame mm. in the other day and you saw it yeah and i was like we're turning around and my friend james was like we're not turning around and i was like i think we should turn around is this your other gay friend that i've been replaced with? it is <laughs> is this the one i met at your birthday yes, party yes there's no replacing he though. was very sweet though <gasps> we can all be friends we can yeah yeah. Did I not, did I wash off the, my powder under my eyes or is it all just still caked on there? No, no, no. It looks good. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I put extra powder here when I have to wear my glasses before I film. I'm like, oh God, did I not get it off? It's off. It's so I've good. been talking a lot. I'll let you talk about poor Joe. Oh, poor Joe. What a sweet angel boy I've married, huh? Crazy. Um, I woke up this morning at 3.48 and, had, and I just was like, he's snoring. So I know he's dead to the world and I'm just violently ripping ass. <laughs> I think I just snotted. Oh no. But it's like it's loud. They're like quintessential they're, I know, it was like quintessential movie farts where it's like <laughs> like a big ass fart. And he's just snoring away and I was like, what a time to be alive. <laughs> like, no, I'm not gonna go back to sleep because I'm like, it's too close to five. I guess I'm up now. I'm listening to a murder podcast, but because my phone's memory is full, it keeps shutting off and I have to keep turning it Can back on. Can you get a new phone? I, it's not my phone. It, it's because I refuse to participate in this fucking charade of the iCloud. If I can't see it, I'm not gonna pay for it monthly, motherfuckers. Well, there, it's not about not seeing it for me. It's about getting hacked. For me, it just all of happened. it is like give me, take me back to the olden days when I can just delete fucking pictures from my phone and that's all I have to do. I don't need, like, I don't need all these things to just be backed up to the cloud. I don't need that picture of that raccoon I saw in that sewer grade fucking ten years but ago. The, Get rid of it. The more we're updating our phones, the more Apple is pushing iCloud on yeah. us, and it's so infuriating. No, to it's me. like I, we don't need it, guys. We but, don't need it. So you are out of space, though. I yep. What phone do you have? Is it the newer it's, one? No, it's a. Uh, it's like the 14 or the 13. It doesn't matter. Back to my story. So I'm okay. ripping ass I'm like sorry. a crazy bitch in bed. My husband's sleeping soundly beside <laughs> me. An angel. <laughs> Shivering in the cold darkness because I have all the blanket. And um, and I didn't even want the blanket. Quite frankly, I was hot. I kept taking the blanket off and just being out in the exposure. And I didn't know he was just cold, but he was just been freezing all night, I guess. <laughs> I can't believe he deals with that. If I was doing that, I'd... I know. He's a sweet boy. So then he's also set alarms on his phone because last week, we all know, my alarm didn't go off. That's sweet. He was going to have to wake up and turn off his alarm mm -hmm. for you. And he drove me to the airport this morning. Wow. What did you do right this week? I, nothing. He did something right this week. He's just a nice boy. He's Something has shifted and he's become Cut a Cut back good to all boy. the episodes where she's like, <laughs> her head's about to pop off of her body because she's so angry. I think maybe he's been quietly watching the podcast and not telling me. So I'm totally <laughs> outing myself right now. But I fart, babe. Hey, <laughs> I mean, he knows if you woke no, him up. No, he doesn't because I didn't wake him up because when he did wake up to the alarm he's like i've been over here freezing all night could i please have some blankets my queen and i was like yes baby here's your here's your blankie allotment for the next 10 minutes before you have to drive me to burbank <laughs> and as i moved the blankets every fart from the last hour <laughs> oh you were chamber locking him in and he goes oh god the puppy's been farting and i said yes he has <laughs> Does the does Icky sleep under the blankets? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, he likes to bear them. <laughs> but Icky, this time Icky honestly wasn't under the blankets. He was on top of them. But Joe was just too sleepy to realize. And then I was like, this is why we have Icky. Wow. This right here, this is why. Well, at least you have these little nuances. Mm -hmm. Shane, I wouldn't know because Shane and I are sleep divorced. You're sleep divorced? Right now we are. What had happened? Is everything okay? I didn't know. I did think it was tense when I walked in. <laughs> 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 no every time shane gets sick or under the weather he like uh he falls asleep we're in his bedroom right now by the way oh cute and so like when he wakes <laughs> up we like joke because there's like two lights and he like turns them off at night <laughs> and then like when i come downstairs and he's awake i'm like turning them on i'm like good morning my sweet angel princess <laughs> but i actually did get pretty mad at him because he well he did like the first night we got back the moths the moths and they were fluttering around in the bedroom the and then he did try to come to bed 
and like there is something about this mattress that's just not right. Oh, like, we just it, got a new mattress. It gives me back problems too, and like our pillows aren't situated. And so then he like couldn't sleep up there. He was like, I felt dizzy. The air was not right because uh, it just wasn't right. So then he came down here and he slept down here. I haven't seen him since. Oh my god. I haven't seen the motherfucker <laughs> since. And like a week ago, I was like, I really need you to like come back to bed because yeah. it's starting to make me feel like you hate me. Yeah. And he's like, No, we just got to figure out the bed up there. And I was like. I don't know. I think you're liking it down there more than you're liking sleeping with me. And yeah. so then I did get really butthurt about it and mad. And then I threw a fit and then he tried to sleep up there and he's like sweating and upset. And yeah. like, I'm trying so hard. And I was like, go back to your bedroom. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> so we've got to move it's back fine. to California if I want my husband back. Joe and I have the same problem though. And so I've like a long time ago, I was like, fine, I'll never pick a couch and I'll never pick a bed. And you can just, because I can't, I also can't handle him thinking it's my fault that he's uncomfortable uh -huh. because that adds an extra, pe <laughs> like it's like peppering in rage on me. Like, I'm just like, are you blaming me for this shit? Because you picked out the bed. So for the longest, he we when I was depressed and he couldn't sleep in the bed, we were both sleeping on the couch on different sides of it. <laughs> and I was like, should we just get another one of these couches in the bedroom? <laughs> like, should we just get rid of the bed entirely and put this and like we'll just buy this couch and put it in the bedroom? <laughs> and I was like, do I have to move down here? And she's like, it's just darker down here. I can have the TV. I don't like any tv right. or noises on he likes to sleep with the tv on and he like he's like the way he's like something about the way that it's situated it I, holds him probably he said i sleep through the night and yeah. i never sleep through the night and i was like well i don't want to ruin you sleeping through the night it hurts, though. i know how you're feeling well but now i'm like all three of my dogs sleep yeah. right next to me do you, we really need a husband you get used to it <laughs> and honestly it is a little bit better to be like i get like couples that have separate rooms no i'm gonna make him come back to the bedroom um, I'm, <laughs> and i, I did throw a big fit about it like i got actually upset about it and he was oh, like, i used not to too i'd be like this is the only thing we have if we don't share a bed what do we share <laughs> bills <laughs> no i don't think so <laughs> get your ass in this bed so he ordered a new mattress and it's coming today wow yeah i can't believe we have the same problems and what if he doesn't like that mattress then it's on him it's always <laughs> on him that's the thing i'm like well if you don't like this mattress go get another one motherfucker i bought one like a year ago and he's like i hate it it's like okay it's your problem i can't do this <laughs> it I is really unfortunate can't do when it. you get a mattress you don't like it's just well it's also like i'm never picking it out i'm just paying for it and that so like i've even i'm done with that too i'm like all right go figure it out mm. go out into the world i bought the couch too and at first the couch is everything and then he's like this couch sucks and i was like i could fucking kill you for that <laughs> remember when we liked him so much five remember, minutes ago remember, yes he was so he's so good he's so good this is the other thing you got to remind yourselves like that's the past like, things are getting, it is are wild better. though that he woke up at what time to take you to the airport five that's crazy i would never he's a i won't good even man. pick you guys up from the airport at 10 a.m <laughs> no he's so sweet he's doing it because my car broke down Oh. I don't have a car now. Wait, so is it diagnosed over? No, it's not diagnosed dead, over, girl? but I, I have like, because you know I'm cheap. I have the bare minimum AAA, uh -huh. which only gives me like a nine or a seven mile tow, but the place <laughs> I'm taking it is nine miles away. <laughs> so instead of like risking getting charged $50 for two miles, I, put, I just upped my AAA card to be a gold pass member, but I have to wait a period of time in order to use <laughs> So my car's just broken down in front of my house until that week is up and I can have it sent. Do you think it's going to be fixable or is it going to be cheaper to just so I talked, have to get a new car? I don't remember who I talked to, but someone recently had this problem where, because remember I told you I hit a curb and then all the lights went on? Yes, I remember. So I hit a curb very violently and I thought I broke, I thought I popped two tires. And I was like, oops, <laughs> my bad. That sounds like two tires are out now. <laughs> Because, like, I mean, previously I'd done something similar. And my friend was like, what the fuck, dude? And I was like, I don't know, but it's just keep going. And then I got back in the car on the phone with my friend. And I was, it was like that telltale, like, sound of a flat tire. And she's like, on the phone, she's like, dude, I think you need to pull over. I think you have a flat tire. I was like, do you think I could make it to Costco? <laughs> she's like, pull over, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and then Joe, like when Joe asked what happened, I was like, I don't want to tell you. And like when the guy came in the tow truck, I was like, a honey badger came and lacerated my tires in a way that felt deeply misogynistic. And of course. course. <laughs> and they were like, what? And I was like, I can't drive. It's me. I'm the problem. I can't drive. Your nails are pretty, though. I did these. Really? Yeah, I was depressed. Okay. And you know, when I'm depressed, my nails make me happy. Why are we depressed this week? I stopped working a program and ran myself into the ground and literally... 
it's like you have to be run back into the ground to be reminded of why you do the things that you do to not lose your fucking mind. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited that today's podcast is sponsored by SeatGeek because it is genuinely one of my favorite brands. I use them time and time again. Right now, I currently have my eyes on some Blink-182 tickets for next Monday in Denver. I love SeatGeek because with over 28 million downloads, they are the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. And with artists like, of course, Taylor Swift, the Jonas Brothers, Big Time Rush, Drake, and Beyonce all on tour right now, you're not going to want to miss out. SeatGeek puts tickets from all across the web in one place to make sure that you're getting a good deal. And each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. Plus, every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you already know that SeatGeek came through for all of you guys. You can use code SIP for $20 off your your tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code SIP. Make sure you click the link in our description section to download their fantastic app. And that's $20 off your first tickets at SeatGeek when you use our promo code SIP. So I lost my, I lost my mind. <laughs> and when was this? Um, this week. I just lost <laughs> it. Lost my mind. I was setting because I'm so excited that this manager I met with wants to read me. Mm -hmm. And I'm every time like I'm always like, well, I'm always my best self in the present. So I want to send her a present tense script. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I put this huge burden on myself to write an entire script in like a month, which is a lot. Yeah. And um, I did it and I really like it. And uh, but to do that required me letting go of everything that I do to keep myself healthy and right. sane. So I, I lost my work schedule. So my workflow's off. I'm working through the weekends. Every weekend, it's been like three weeks of working through the weekend. I'm not doing my laundry. So my room's a mess. I'm like, my bathroom's a mess. My bed's not made. Like my sheets are dirty. And my chaos everywhere. Chaos everywhere. Yeah. Chaos everywhere. And then I had a brand deal where I was like, to stay mentally well, I have to keep my room nice. And it's like in the background, my house is a disaster. <laughs> like just dying of laughter. And I'm like, well, obviously I'm not okay right now. But when I am okay, my shit is nice. <laughs> like, that's why it's so important to keep your shit nice. Otherwise you're a disaster like me. <laughs> that's my brand deal. <laughs> And so that's why you hit your, was that your breaking point? Oh, no, my breaking point is like, so that's it. I stopped going to the gym. I stopped going to my meetings. I, my sleep schedule is all off. I'm not showering. And then it's like, oh, you're acting like a sick person. So you're getting sick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I finished my script and then started to polish it and was just like, you know, I can't deal with my car right now. So Joe's like trying to help me and all these things. And I'm just snapping at everyone. And then it's like, oh, You've put a bunch of pressure on yourself for an arbitrary deadline that you set. Right. Nobody is expecting you to meet this deadline that you set for yourself. And deadlines are important. But if you're making them so impractical that you're driving yourself fucking crazy, you can't do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been there, done that. And yeah. it, it is like you honestly, like even trying to like just be like, I got to just grind this out until it's done. I just got to keep yeah. working. I just got to keep working. Honestly, the creative product or whatever it's you're shit. working on is better if you maintain your schedule like going yeah. to the gym and doing all these things because it's what keeps you like mentally sane mm -hmm. and create like you got to fill your cup you know yeah if you're gonna be giving into anything yeah i can't share anything if i don't have anything to share i did try going to orange theory for the first time in a long time because i like the one here mm -hmm. more like the ones by my house in california I hate them. They're awful. They're awful. They're like, you can't go. And this one here in Parker is like clean, nice, mm -hmm. happy. But because it's just like a very, I work out a lot but because it's a variation of like what I hadn't been doing. I couldn't and walk altitude. for like three days. Oh my God. And you know me at Orange Theory. Like well, I can't hard. take anything. I can't just like do the thing. I mm. have to like go all the way. And then afterwards I couldn't walk for like three days. And I was like walking like I had just been <laughs> fucked so hard by like five guys at once. And Shane's like, what are you doing? I was like, I went to Orange Theory. <laughs> they <laughs> no, I, just kidding. Wow, that's dark. Uh, you gotta cut it? Yeah, I gotta cut that right. <laughs> no, I feel you. Orange Theory can fuck my shit up too, bro. Okay. I did I did an Orange Theory where I uh, we were in a plank mode with our, what are they called? Muscle makers? Weights. We were in a plank with a weight and we were doing this thing where we lift up with the weight like a like free willy saying hello. Uh-huh. And my chest hurt so fucking bad after that I didn't know what was happening. And Joe was like, I'm going to take you to the emergency room. Like, why does your chest hurt so bad? I was like, it doesn't seem like it's my heart. It seems like it's on the outside. 
And he's like, like your muscles in your chest? And I was like, yes, but this makes no sense. I've never felt this before in my life. And then I was like, oh, wait. I was like, baby, I was doing free willy waves with weights in my arms. Do you think that perhaps could be? And he's like, yeah, dude. It is wild when you work a muscle yeah. that you maybe have never also, worked. Also, why are we working sternum muscles at Orange Theory? I think about this all the time. I'm like, are, they're shoulder focused and sternum focused. But let's talk about these abs, baby. It's summer. The fuck? <laughs> Who wants this all beefed up? I'm confused. Oh. What? I have to apologize to you. Oh, but then you're going to pick beef with me? Well, no, they're two separate instances. Yeah. My beef with you is that you've removed your location from oh, my site and i oh, like i'm offended no i'm hurt i'm upset it's, i couldn't know this goes no this go back to my phone trauma I, sure i'm does. deleting text message conversations and that means i'm deleting my locations from you guys because you know me i don't read anything i just hit okay <laughs> <laughs> so every time it's like do you want to remove your locations i'm like i'm not reading it but i deleted joe to, i'll, I'll re-add you that's not personal because i like track you for work <laughs> like if you're not responding to me i'm like oh is she in an orange theory class or is she I'll just at home like you. asleep or what and like even when you guys are traveling it's yeah. nice for me to be like i did where wonder is why she? you hadn't told me where i was recently nope i wanted to save it to pick a fight with you on you're the podcast. so nuts dude because it was uh jarring well you we're don't back. have to do it right now on the oh it was that easy yeah okay <laughs> My and bad. you might get mad at me why there was nothing else for me to do what I went and saw Jennifer Lawrence's movie with you. couldn't. You. I know. I had told Lizzie I would see it, but you the I'm is, literally sleeping over in a week to go see this movie with this motherfucker. I feel like it's going to be out of theaters by then. It's not. And it's something I wanted to experience in the theaters. Did you go with Shane? Yeah. Oh, my God. And my mom went, too. Oh, my God. We invited Morgan. She wasn't available. Morgan, oh. let's go. I'm here next week. Let's get our nails done and go to the movies. I'm staying at your brother's house. Pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> done with you. I loved it. And oh, when my God. God. Shane was like, wow, Jennifer Lawrence is Lizzie. And I'm like, I know. Like the personality types, like the acting She's types. She's Lizzie, but successful. <laughs> <laughs> She's Lizzie with a baby in a house. God love her. And she does nude scenes in that movie right after she, like she had just popped out a baby. You I'm see her like, titties? Uh, you see, well, it's like dark, but you see she's fully frontal. Yeah. Wow. Are you sure it's her and not a body double? Yeah. She's oh, and I I was like that too. I was like, wow, I can't believe she went nude for that movie. And Shane was like, oh, she's been a nude in a lot of movies. So I guess she's just wow, like somehow free willy with her body. That. I respect it. I'm like, she's a new I respect mom. it too. But she's I'm standing also... in her truth. She's just like, you know, she's standing in her. Truth. Well, no, I feel like a lot of people like for because it wasn't completely necessary. Right. But she's just like doing it anyways. And I feel like a lot of people would be like, oh, I have a kid. I don't want them to see that when I'm a little bit older. But she's just like, I no, am who I, I am her. with or without kid. I love her so much. And I thought the movie was very endearing. By the end of it, I really liked the characters. I was like, oh, if this was a series I'd keep watching. It was maybe like five minutes too long. Or right, there's like, it are. felt like a little too long. But I really appreciated what they did. I thought it was fun. I see some people are like, the premise is toxic. And I'm like, you guys all just. Well, the premise is real. That. Oh, yes, but it's they're saying because she's like a 30 something year old Oof. and there's a 19 on, year old guys. and the create the story. I mean, yes, it was found. It was based upon a real ad. And the, they're like the it's, background for this movie. What is it called, by the way? Uh, it's called something like who cares a shit. <laughs> the movie's based off of an ad that was posted on like Craigslist or something where a couple of parents were like, can somebody come date my son before he goes off to school? Because he's, he's a, a fucking weirdo. And and that's the thing is. It, Yes. And so they so were saying it's yeah. more about a story of helicopter parents and like letting go and like not trying to make every no hard feelings is the name of the movie. Mm -hmm. And so I was watching, I guess, because it's not like it made 15 million this opening weekend. And I guess for a movie like that, that's really good. And they're like, Jennifer Lawrence can mm -hmm. still sell seats. And uh, the lady I was watching on YouTube was like, oh, her next move needs to be like an Aaron Brockovich. She needs to make like a Sandra Bullock or a, no, let uh, Jennifer Lawrence <laughs> live. She makes great fucking choices. She's always a good time. Well, yeah, she, like we had talked about before how she like left the biggest talent agency in the world because they were hiding the smaller scripts from her, which are the things she actually mm -hmm. wants to do. And I do respect that about her. She's not like trying to cash in on anything. She wants to make movies she wants to make. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think like I, it's going to be exciting to see her next move. Yeah, you know? I love her. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with her. Um, uh, I know we're not supposed to do this, but can I please say something about the idol? <sighs> <laughs> I know I didn't remove it from the document but I put it all the way to the end so you could just touch on it at the end well this is just like me, me catching up with you uh, okay just catching up with friends so I stayed because I'm a psycho and I had FOMO I'm like maybe it'll go somewhere maybe it'll go somewhere it's like no if you know anything about Sam Levinson his storylines never go anywhere I, mean, I like Euphoria yeah but the storylines never go anywhere you don't think so 
I think the only thing that played out was you know me i can't the, remember what happened right it doesn't matter one thing played out and it's these girls fucking the same guy and then at the end it's like kind of just like Meh. did it play out <laughs> not really and we're gonna jump to college next year so like we'll never know how that really yeah okay anywho uh make it quick i hate the idol. at the end of this episode that makes no fucking like it all makes sense but it's like who fucking cares like they keep doing yeah, these, why are you watching well they keep having these really funny things where she's like i can't tell you my trauma it's too unique nobody knows trauma like me and then she's like my mom spanked me <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> and then this other guy's like i can't tell you or something he's like i'm hiding the fact that i can sing from you so i'm a liar and it's like what kind of weird baby shit games are you playing like sam like what do you like this is all not deep at all but you're treating it like it's the fucking bottom of the ocean how are the ratings or is anybody watching people are like that's what i keep trying to see like who's fucking watching this and at the end of this episode this is episode four. They show the teaser for next week's. Next week is the final episode of the season. It's a five episode There's season. There's all this hoopla for like two years leading up to yeah. this show five, that's so five dramatic. Mm-hmm. And it's like we have all these Rolling Stone articles yeah. talking about how it's a problematic show. And it's five episodes. I watched The weekend masturbate for five minutes in a fucking dressing room. And it's only five episodes. We need to get a life. And we're about to roll out. So we'll be back. Well, 24%. I'm- from critics on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, it's trash. And but I, that, I, I'm jealous of everyone who checked out because you really made a good choice for yourselves. Th- this one doesn't roll. Oh, you're on yours. Yeah. Oh, he did switch cameras. Oh, so hey, we don't girls, even roll so out. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. So if you if you stopped watching, fucking good for you. The FOMO is not real here. You have missed nothing. It is fucking shit. There is a part of me that still wants to roll out because the power went out yesterday, and so I'm scared. Roll out. <laughs> Cutting. Today's podcast is also supported by HelloFresh, and with HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip all those daunting trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That is why it's America's number one meal kit. If you're stuck in a recipe rut, you can take a bite out of something new with over 40 recipes to choose from weekly. With options to please even the pickiest eaters, you'll always find meals everyone at your table will enjoy. And if you need dinner like right now you can look for quick and easy recipes on the hellofresh menu including fast and fresh options that are ready in just 15 minutes or less hellofresh is your guaranteed recipe for success from foolproof instructions to high quality proteins and veggies hellofresh brings out your inner chef with every tasty easy to prepare meal you already know that i'm a big fan of hellofresh i've gotten my extended family on hellofresh because you can walk downstairs and have a great delicious healthy meal ready for you in just a short amount of time. So go to hellofresh.com slash the sip 16 and use code the sip 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash the sip 16 and use code the sip 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. One take two. Did this help? <laughs> All right. Do you want to get into a little bit of hot toppity tops? Yes, sir. Oh man. Let's get into some fights right now, girly. Why? Well, no, I just, I'm, I'm just saying, girl. What are you upset about? Well, let's talk about your first headline. Okay, so Kim K is working on American Horror Story right now. Well, your title is She Crosses WGA Picket Lines by Working on American Horror Story. I mean, to some degree, yeah. Well, that's what you put in for the headline. Well, no, that be, that's what people are upset about. So Kim K is shooting American Horror Story right now, which, like, honestly, I am confused. I am confused. I, to, I get that, like, scripts are delivered... All, all the scripts that are shooting right now had to have been delivered before May first. But like, what show doesn't make alterations or changes up to the well, day that's that they're what I'm shooting? Saying. So that is a little weird to me. But like, the I get it because Kim's just super famous and on a very popular show right now. Like her casting on America Hor- Amer- whatever the show is American called, Horror Story is like a what? A what? But like. Emma Roberts was also like well, paparazzi all- filming the other day. So like, if we're going to attack Kim Kardashian, we yeah. have to t- attack Emma Roberts and Ryan Murphy, who is like, it's weird to me that Ryan Murphy wouldn't have shut down in solidarity because it's like, it is a little bit enraging because all these people are stopping work. And when you stop work is the only way that you get any sort of leverage over these people. So if you are going to still provide them with content that buys them more time and gives them more power in the negotiating room against the writer that you fucking are, 
Like, let's, Ryan Murphy's a well, writer. It's weird for Ryan. I mean, for the actors, I would say it's not weird because they've signed contracts. If they breach their contracts, they could get sued for not showing up to work. They risk that right. studio never work, choosing to work with them again. Even SAG after I was reading like a Hollywoodish article and it was like, if actors choose not to come to work during the strike, they may be replaced or even sued for breach of contract. SAG after, which is the actors union, actually like, quote, advises its members to continue to work. Yeah. Um, because of that reason like they and don't want to deal with their actors being sued either but where i get confused is like ryan murphy obviously knows what he's been doing he's mm -hmm. been doing this forever i feel like if he felt like it was a total breach he wouldn't well, be doing it well i mean i don't know because i have also heard that like successful showrunners do still take meetings during this time and it's like it's very annoying because it's also like there are some there are some stipulations right so my experience that I've shared before is like when I sold a TV show, I sold it to a studio and then the studio owns the show and it's written. So anybody who has a show that was already written by May 1st and in the hands of the studio, the studio can now go sell it and that can go to series. And they're going to do everything they can to take it to series because they want as much content and networks, to hold out on the writers. And first. networks right now are like, if you if, are going out to studios saying, what do you have that's done and written that we can have right now? Because that'll be the first thing that we put into production because we're out of content. And what's fucked about that is it's like, it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. So the writer who wrote that is now going to get money in a time of work, in a work stop, but... You're also giving something to the company, to not to the company, but to the entity that we're trying to work and against. You're prolonging an you're, agreement being made. You're prolonging an agreement Fucking being made. Fucking everyone else. And you're not scabbing. What you're doing is technically okay. But uh, and even though all this shit is technically okay, it still comes back and fucks you, but not really you because you're a multimillionaire who's going to be okay. It fucks the little guy who really did only get to be a junior staff writer yeah. and who really did only make $10,000 last year while you made three million dollars in the first quarter on one show oh, no i just and I, I don't disagree i'm just saying they're of course they're going to specifically come at kim kardashian they came at kim kardashian because she tweeted on a break like what should i do in this break <laughs> and they're like i don't know bitch but we're rallying the troops and we're going to come pick it like <laughs> i love her though yeah god i love her uh so uh courtney kardashian and travis revealed that their baby is going to be a boy so she's actually even further along than I had suspected. Yeah. I was like, oh, maybe they're like 12 weeks. But I don't think it's until about 18 20? to 20 weeks yeah. where you can tell the gender. Yeah. So, wow. It's crazy. Crazy. Do you think you guys are going to hang out? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't think a Kardashian Get a matcha. is going to want to hang out with us. Get a Lemmy Matcha. I mean, I would love to be mommy friends with Courtney Kardashian. You would? Of course. Dude, I don't know. What do you mean? Courtney won't even let her kids spend the night, or uh, Chloe won't let her kids spend the night at Courtney's house. Really? Mm hmm. Because her kids are out of line. And honestly, I do watch her kids being out of line like all the time. And I'm like, God bless her. I don't have the patience for that. I haven't come to the conclusion of her and Kim's fight. Like I'm uh, at the Kardashians. Oh, Courtney needs to shut the fuck up. She's upset that her bridal sh her bridal party vibe didn't get turned into a collection. She's jealous. I understand. But I, I think her feeling, while I think Courtney's annoying yeah i do think her feelings are valid why that, like <laughs> she, like the one thing that she got where like for the first time probably in her entire life there were more eyes on her and more attention on her than kim for once well that's what a wedding is and uh, yes. you're the bride bitch and, she and your like, wedding's over and she kept even saying like during the wedding like kim couldn't even let me have this moment like all of my friends were like kim's noticeably miserable because the attention's not on her during the wedding and i understand like as her like her sister what is this gosh i'm on so many spam emails that i you used to be able to report spam on emails and they would filter them out of your account yeah you no. can't like block a sender anymore. and that's another reason why my phone's full <sighs> it makes me like it's enraging. rage fills my body yeah. every time because i've googled pro i've spent like a combined i hour. haven't even signed up for half of these things i'm like where did they get my fucking email me too and then you click uh, drives me bonkers <laughs> but i'm just saying Courtney's allowed to have her feelings that like I can't even have one moment that isn't overshadowed by Kim but well she did she had her wedding she did but then Kim like came in and went, I, I understand like I'm I'm not against I also, what Kim did I mean, if I was Kim I also would have taken yeah. the deal even like Kylie and Kendall are like yeah if I was Kim I would have taken the deal but I see both sides 
no there is there isn't both sides she's allowed to have the feelings i like no everybody's entitled to their feelings that doesn't mean they're right feelings are not facts yeah but your her feelings are authentic to what her body has created like she's allowed to feel them i think like sister or sibling roots run deep right and i think there's probably a lot of like but like i get rage feelings over things all the time and the difference is i can't hold you accountable for them even though they stem from you you know what i mean Okay, are we talking in reality? Yeah. Or are you doing it? What stem? What rage do you get stemming from me? A let's lot have, of things. Let's have an episode airing from the today. You want to talk about just today? <laughs> yeah. What did I do today? That go get my you? vlog camera. I need this I for got, the Real Housewives. I got your. <laughs> I got your water. I got your liquid IV. I got your coffee. No. So here's an example, and I'm saying this as a person who's taken a step back from it and realizes my feelings are not facts, and I'm crazy. Okay. I get enraged when people question mark something that's obvious. <laughs> and when you question marked my text about the plane being delayed, I was like, what don't you understand? And I told and that sent I, me into a rage spiral. I explained to you that what was I, very authentic no. to what and my body created. No, I'm so, telling you, I'm wrong. I'm crazy. Can, I'm crazy. I, no, no, no. I, I understand. But I'm also saying, like, if you would have read the delayed text, Lizzie sent me a text that the plane was delayed, <laughs> but it said it was delayed and it was taking off in two minutes from now. So I was like, is that a delay? Is two minutes from now a delay? That was my question. Right. But because, how do I how do I know that that's your question because, when all I get is a question mark on a very clear message the clear it wasn't a clear message the message no, it was a clear it message. literally said there's a delay on this plane due to a mechanical issue it's now taking off two minutes from now how is that not fucking confusing it's like pretty clear chris are you <laughs> no 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 it's taking off chris, two minutes from now chris, how's a two minute don't delay? be a pussy chris i mean listen i i was a part of the whole experience so it, of course it made sense to me but i wasn't there <laughs> no chris i also sent you the text message from united and after you read it you were not confused I mean, the, the bottom line is the text, my rage regardless it's confusing it's now expected to d- to depart at 7 30 instead of 7 28 so okay, like so what's confusing about that that's crazy why are they sending you a delay message because it was 30 minutes delayed our original flight was supposed to leave at 7 a.m okay i didn't know that you sent it to me and it, it, it was two minutes from the takeoff time right okay anyway but that feels different than the courtney kim situation no it's not because i'm that has you you're entitled to your confusion and it has nothing to do with me do you know what i'm saying and yet i could have beaten you to death if you had been in front of me and that is how much anger i had in my body and none of that has anything to do with you that's my own shit and that's why i'm saying all of courtney's shit is courtney's shit but she's holding yes. Kim responsible it's, for it, and that is bullshit. And okay, I agree with you because you. It, and I, I think and it's, I love and I don't want to beat you to death. I now. think it's <laughs> deep rooted seeds yeah. that Courtney has time and time again with Kim being like everything jealous. I do is overshadowed by Kim. She's jealous, and I yes, and the, and I'm like okay, well you're valid in feeling that, but like the reason your family's famous is also because of Kim. Yeah, and I know it's like you can't be thankful or kissing Kim's feet every day for like the platform you guys now have. Right, but I do agree with you having put it in that way like she needs to go to therapy and deal with her jealousy on her own and not project it to be kim's problem especially on the reality show because now it's something kim has to deal with like now the world has is like pitting us against each other and and they have ammo for it and kim's at this big moment in her life which by the way i like so detached from their reality that i'm like oh is this a big moment (laughs) <laughs> everything kim's always so and i'm glad that kim's still yeah, excited she's so about juiced, these things and i'm like is this a big deal but i'm like good for you kim i was watching him like uh, seems like whatever to me yeah but i guess it's just priorities are different like i the, guess the fashion world is very i don't get it fashiony i don't get it me either i mean and i was thinking about it i was watching oh the idol i was watching the idol and i was like wow all these workers are like really well and i know it's not real but it's like these people in these industries dress a certain type of way like on set all the wardrobe people look like wardrobe people and like in the commercial world specifically directors look like directors Mm -hmm. and i'm like wow so when i direct i have to look like that and i'm like i would feel like such a fucking clown fraud if i showed up anywhere looking like the way some of these directors show up to set but it is kind of a thing because to become to manifest and become what you want you kind of emulate what they're doing like even when i wanted to be an entertainment reporter i took on their voice that they all did because it's like if i want a job in that category you got to do it like shane and i we went to blackhawk this weekend and we were gambling yeah and there's like they just had regular tv they didn't have youtube so we're like i guess we'll watch the news and it is like 
Tadam! They're all speaking yeah. through their nose, and we're like, when are they going to drop this shit? Like, when is it going to not... When are they going to realize, like, this is fucking weird, let's yeah. drop it? But they're all doing it because it's always... It's been what's always been done. I don't know, but it's like, so sometimes, like, if I'm on set and I walk and I'm like, well, that's clearly the director, because they're dressed like a fucking asshole, and it's like, do they feel dumb? They should feel a little dumb. And it's like, when are we going to... I guess what Gen Z is doing in a lot of ways is questioning all these things that we've always done that are questionable like yes they take it to an extreme and they make me so fucking annoyed but there are like i bought a pair of coveralls (laughs) i bought a pair of over like coveralls and i was like these these, and now i look like a director but it's like really it's a little bit too close to wardrobe but it's also like i feel like a fucking idiot in it and i can't work if i feel like a fucking idiot i need to be comfortable yeah i like a simple basic t-shirt I, you know, I like a turtleneck. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't really want. And so, you know, I guess it's like, I don't, I can't, I can't work and be a poser, but I also feel like a fucking loser because what I like wearing are basics. I think what's always groundbreaking is somebody that breaks into something being authentic to themselves. Right. And I think time and time again, even like as us, we like talk so, uh, I would say authentically, like yeah. we're, uh, we're making ourselves pretty unemployable to the uh, mainstream world yeah. by like talking on this podcast the way we do. But it's like network TV's going and dwindling for a reason. Yeah. And it's because people crave something that's real. If you yeah. can smell bullshit, you're not going to want to watch it. Well, come over here, guys, because you're going to get some blandly dressed bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> or right. I guess real shit. Oh, gosh. This whole story. I This had happened or this had been announced right after we started recording last week, which was uh, the submarine, the uh, The submersible, the Titan submersible. Mm. Gosh. And like makes it hard for myself to breathe every time I saw a headline of this. Like it just like hit. And I think it hit a lot. I mean, everyone's making fun of it on the Internet, which I think you guys are fucking sick. But it makes me sick thinking about like the reality of the situation and that people died. I am a party to both camps. How? I, I, How can you laugh at people dying? I mean, I'm so not horrifically because I can compartmentalize. Because I'm devastated for the loss, but and if this like was... I can't look at, and I know that, the, and I know that it is his fault, but I cannot look at a picture of uh, what's what was his name, the guy who built it, Stockton. I don't know his name. Can you look up his name? I can't look at a picture of him and not feel devastated. And I know that what he did was not right because he had been warned by a lot of people to not use these particular materials and mm-hmm. that ever, and like a lot of people in the community had said, please stop. This is not safe. It's a matter of time before catastrophe. Yeah, Even James Cameron had spoken. Yeah. Out and it's just devastating. And, uh, and still I, I cannot, I don't think he was a swindler. I know that what he did was incredibly dangerous and incredibly stupid, but I can't look at a picture of him and be like mad, mad. Uh, yeah, I think I, you, but I, I, I'm devastated. I'm devastated. I read an article about the the 19-year-old boy who was there with his dad, and he brought a Rubik's cube to solve at the bottom of the ocean. Stockton Rush. And at first they were saying that kid didn't want to go and was forced. And, and now the, the mom had now yeah. come out and been like, no, I gave him my spot because he was, he so, was excited. so excited yeah. about it. And he brought the Rubik's cube and it just... All of it is devastating, devastating and heartbreaking. And it's like a lot of these people so badly wanted to like, I can't relate. Like no. there's not the safest submarine in the world that you could convince me to want to go down. Like I have such, like I go to the bottom of a pool and my yeah. ears are like, uh, yeah. like I don't like the ocean. I barely like planes. Yeah. So like this kind of thing isn't for me, but I understand somebody. And like, I know like it's, it's a ri- like they paid a lot of money to do mm-hmm. this but if they're rich or poor i would still be devastated by this kind of tragedy because it's just like lives were over too soon for something that shouldn't have been you know yeah and in the same sentence i can appreciate a good meme because hmm. i can compartmentalize it some of them are funny i dude. just think of it as like if it was somebody i knew or somebody that was my loved one i don't think i'd be laughing at the memes you know what i mean yeah like, I just don't think I would find it funny. And to open the internet and see everyone making fun of it, I'd yeah. be like, people are dead. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. But, like, I'm not mad at you or the internet for, like, making I'm fun not making of... the memes. No, I know. Yeah. But so you're I, I get to laugh what, at the meme. I get what I you're saying. I would be a more, like, if you were out there making them, I'd be like, Ugh. it's a, that's a little too far for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's just devastating. I couldn't stop watching the coverage or the I, footage of I it. I do have to say I was really annoyed that the coverage kept saying there was a chance for rescue because there wasn't. No. There was never a chance for rescue. And I like me knowing nothing 
about all of this and hearing the three possible outcomes one they're floating on the surface two they imploded three they're stuck on the bottom i was like oh well they imploded yeah that's the well, only possible outcome days later like james cameron who's been down there i think 32 times yeah and is has like stock in a different submarine company mm-hmm. um was just talking about how like of course he was like the moment i heard where it lost connection and what like the status of it yeah. he was like i knew it had imploded right there and the search needed to go right under mm-hmm. where they had gone down and that's where they found because it. It, and to say like like i did hate how the internet exploited this like so many people it was mm-hmm. like so aggressively one news channel had a countdown to loss of air yeah and like what the fuck i mean even a lot of like youtubers or podcasters yeah. like that's their thumbnail and they're like using this as a marketing tactic to and i get like we're talking about it too like i'm not making this the thumbnail or the title mm-hmm. of the video to get clicks based upon this tragedy but i just thought it was but the news cycle of it all and even james cameron was like giving all of these families hope that there was a chance and that to is find so them fucked he was like us in the community knew yeah. what had happened as soon as we heard the coordinates well, of this uh, yeah. but the news wanted to make this this big cycle yeah and it's it's and it's that's the grossest thing to me like before the memes that's the grossest thing yeah. it's the drag out of the news media putting the timer on the cam on the screen so that you feel like you have to stay and watch this thing and because it's like you hear like oh they might have to do a rescue it's like no actually if they're stuck on the bottom there is no rescue they're stuck on the bottom and then you hear that there's the banging like 10 yeah. hours before the air's up and you're like oh my gosh i had so much up. i was like sitting here praying for them being like oh. hope they're because i didn't know until i had watched all these interviews right. after the fact and now it's like all the simulations of what happens when you oh i heard one guy say i read one article that said um that if there was any sort of leak or anything that would probably happen on the descent and then they were like they hadn't even made it to the bottom they weren't even uh, into the trip over two hours Mm -hmm. to get there and then they lost contact and i was like oh well then that is what happened to them and the only like comforting thing for me is it happens in less than a second like milliseconds is what they say they say that implosion happens so quickly that your brain doesn't have a red a moment to register seeing or feeling it yeah which i think and so that's the only comforting part about it for me or if it was one of my loved ones or you know they do know that they had a problem though like the people on board knew they had a problem i think they were trying to go i mean we don't know for sure well they dropped the platform that was on it Mm. which would have been key to whatever they were doing and then they dropped something else and when they dropped both of those things is james cameron explained it to me as a he's a good friend of mine Mm -hmm. me too um (laughs) He said that the the dropping of those two things made it clear that they knew that they were in a pretty fucked up situation. And a lot, and there was a like there's a video circulating of them, uh, one of the guys reading the warnings aloud that it's not yeah. like approved by any safety measures, yeah. and it's all the and you can't die and all of these things. And the guy, the dad was like, "Oh, that's really distracting me, Chris. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's oh, flashing for I'm some sorry. reason." Um. Um. Oh, the guy was saying, well, I just so badly wanted to get down to see the Titanic. It was like worth signing that yeah. for me because there's no other company that allows what they were doing to be done. And Well, that's just not true because James Cameron I mean, but James does. Cameron has full, uh, has a lot of money and I'm sure he funded it. Well, these himself. are billionaires. That's true. Um, but I do have to say I learned something fucking wild. What? Watching this, James Cameron took Bill Paxton down to the Titanic for lunch one day. And on no wait, this is crazy. When they got to the surface, everybody was ashen faced. It was nine eleven. Wow. Bill Paxton and James Cameron were eating on the fucking bow of the submarine while nine eleven happened and they came up and they were told what happened. That's wild. Isn't that fucking crazy? That tops mm. all of our <laughs> where were you on nine eleven stories? Yeah, that's like, nuts. What the fuck? Mm. And Rob Lowe does an incredible Bill Paxton impression. He told the story on Joe Rogan. That's where I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Damn, like Rob Lowe's a great actor. <laughs> I don't I think we should skip this next story because I don't have anything nice to say. Why? Why don't you have anything nice to say? It just gives me the ick. I don't know what to say. Oh, I don't even know if we should say who it. That. I mean, I, I can't even pronounce his last name. I don't so even you're really want to like talk shit about people. Why does he give internet. you the ick? I don't know. There's just something about his presence and her. <laughs> I She's so beloved in my mind and I love her so much. And yeah. I just think like she deserves more. 
I know he's successful and great. I, we can't. We got now that I've what? talked like this, we can't. Know. We can't anymore. He just gives me the ick, like on the biggest level. This I is just, one of the most charming, sweet people. In like the phoniest way, in my opinion. No, like I my would bullshit not. meter goes through the roof, and I'm like, nothing about him is authentic to me. It I feels literally fake. included this article, Chris, just so you know, because I was so moved by yeah, how she, sweetly this man talks about her his headline, wife. headline is it my PMS talking, or is this person the sweetest? soul slash husband i don't think we can reveal the name no but we definitely can't now because no. he's literally a national treasure and you're a fucking maniac <laughs> I, I, interviews of this man everything like i just can't stand him <laughs> i want to know so bad we'll tell you after that's I just, crazy i just don't want to spread that kind of hate on the internet but i just can't stand him this is actually rocking my whole world <laughs> okay so taylor swift uh, told the crowd to lay off John Mayer. She said, please. She tells, because she, over the weekend, yeah, she sung she's announced Dear she's John. doing speak now. Yeah, so uh, she played Dear John this past weekend and told the crowd, quote, I'm 33 years old. I don't care about anything that happened to me when I was 19. I'm not putting this album out so you can go on the internet and defend me against someone who you think I wrote a song about 14 million years ago. She explained uh, she was re-recording Speak Now, which includes Dear John, because she wants to own her own music, but she clearly says she's not interested in trashing him. And this was an article on TMZ, and they just put, like, I thought it was the funniest side note. They said, we haven't heard her say anything like this about all too well the song about her ex-boyfriend jake Gyllenhaal. she's like drag jake <laughs> <laughs> i honestly like i'm so crazy and i am so pmsy right now that i'm like this must mean that she wants us to go fuck with jake's shit <laughs> And it doesn't. <laughs> she just talked about one thing. It has no relation to the other. But I am like, this is a sign, lady. She's winking at us. Let's go slash his fucking tires. It is. My nipples are hard thinking about destroying Jake Gyllenhaal's property right now. I like that. And I love him. I like that Taylor did this because, like, yes, her 19 year old feelings were probably of yeah. anger. But she's like, I'm 33 years old now. We don't need to be go back. We don't need to go back and trash this man. I'm re recording this so I can own the rights to my music yeah. that I. I wasn't even offered to buy. And so I just, I really appreciate, I think this is big of her and I appreciate it because it is wild when the internet goes into a frenzy over these things. Right. And as a person who thinks it's wild when the internet frenzies, I also have to say- You love to join in. Well, I still think we should come for John's blood. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like let Taylor be this big person because- we have to defend her you know what i mean like we don't we don't get we don't get the honor of being a bigger person like we get the honor of backing her shit up while she is publicly sane do you know what i'm saying something i thought that you would really enjoy that the article right under that was uh taylor turned down and a handwritten note i loved that on megan markle's podcast megan merkel literally whatever what's her name markle fucker she hand wrote a note to you know our parents are like fans oh my mom literally sent me a hate text being like stop coming for megan merkel and i was like if megan merkel would just sit the fuck down and chill the fuck out i wouldn't have to come for her and my dad also appreciates her so it's like i feel like my mom and your dad would like hanging out yeah yeah they could have wine together be a chill time (laughs) anywho megan merkel literally merkel i don't care and i don't hear the difference she hand wrote a letter to taylor saying please come on archetypes and taylor someone in taylor's camp was like taylor's not gonna make it and the shady part of me loves this being shady but honestly i just think taylor was like i'm so busy i'm planning a world tour yeah i'm like performing three hours every single night it's oh, nothing I against know. megan it's just yeah. like and every time taylor opens her mouth the media twists and turns it in whatever way favors them to get everyone clicking about her Mm -hmm. so she's like me doing this podcast is such a nightmare for me that it's just not worth it for if you were anyone i don't think it had anything to do with megan markle oh i know that it didn't and i also will pretend that it does right (laughs) i need that narrative and then as we keep going down this megan merkel lane uh an article came out i also read that article <laughs> that like the CEO of U- of UTA, which is like one of the biggest talent agencies in the world, was like doing She's some not press somewhere. Greatly talented a, is the direct. Yeah, quote. Megan Merkel is not greatly talented, and he says just because you're a celeb or you're famous doesn't mean you're talented. And I guess this is after she, after all of this got canceled, and after all these business deals, and obviously there is it called grifters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> UTA and her have parted ways and yeah. she's since gone to WME. So I think the CEO of UTA felt safe in saying, well, 
She's on town. Sayonara, <laughs> sucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on, on some real shit, when I was looking into, and this isn't about Megan, this is about Harry. Um, it is not nothing to produce a podcast. Like no. I read the news every morning and work on this document every morning. Yeah. And you and I go to sometimes even compromise our relationship mm -hmm. to ha save conversations so that we can be better performers on here for you. I will. I got on a fucking airplane today mm -hmm. to give you guys everything that I have. And Megan and Harry were like, yeah, we'll take 20 million. We're not sure what we're going to do. And crickets. And then do you know what Harry said he was going to do? What? Harry never had a podcast because he could not conceptualize one. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? At one point, he suggested doing a show where he interviews people like Vladimir Putin about his childhood trauma. And Spotify said, how in the fuck are you going to get Vladimir Putin to sit down with your dumb ass and talk about his childhood trauma? And if any... If if it's anything like Megan's podcast, somebody else would do the interview. Literally. <laughs> They'd get the sound bites and then have Harry record himself asking the question. Like war criminal Vladimir Putin, who's literally in the middle of attacking Ukraine. And he's also under siege himself by a people having a civil war with him because he's the worst. You want to sit down and put a podcast together with this guy? I will. Harry, are you fucked? Defending. How, like, how entitled are you, Harry, that you think that Vladimir fucking war criminal are you has to be monetized talking about <laughs> such. I don't think so. Okay. But well, I also know nothing about YouTube. So uh, <laughs> I do want to say in Megan's uh, favor, <laughs> there were a lot when we were with Spotify before yeah. we got canceled by Spotify. Uh, <laughs> Who still hasn't told me I'm fired. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a lot of cooks in the kitchen. They wanted to do like 50 meetings a week. I, everyone had to like justify their paycheck is yeah. how it felt to me by like uh, just being like there were so many meetings that weren't necessary. And I so like... I can only imagine with uh, somebody of the status of Meghan Markle, yeah. she probably it was probably such a battle just to get an episode live. So I do feel for well, her I in don't, that regard. I, I, I get that that was your experience, and I understand why, but it's because you came in with ideas and a vision, and she did not. <laughs> okay. So both of these people came to the table with absolutely nothing, <laughs> and they got a lot more money, quite frankly, I than mean, what yes, your production yes, was yes, going to yes. get. And... Megan used to call like the night before posting an episode and be like, I have notes, let's change it. And she used to have to wrap <sighs> in a bunch of producers to make changes. And they only made 12 well, episodes. If Megan Markle would be authentic and talk about her real life, talk about her time on the yeah. suit, it's on suits, talk about Anything. how they transformed into being a royal. If yeah. she really talked, we, I would actually be a fan and listen. We it's know Harry had fucking frozen dick syndrome. It goes back to her <laughs> like, being like the network television version of herself. Yeah. It's all politics. And I'm just like, girl, Shut if, you, up. If, if she shows me who she really is, I'll transform myself into a fan. Yeah, She's if, got some good stories to tell, I'm if, sure. If Meghan Merkel went on Call Her Daddy <laughs> and talked about her sexual exploits and was real as fuck for one minute, I'd show up. Did I, you, oh, do, do you know this about me? Sorry, that was what? really violent. I saw your whole body <laughs> shake. What? Listen, um, I know Meghan Merkel's first kiss. Well, let's get him on the show. His name is, he probably would come, honestly. He's very supportive. He's in my improv group, Joshua Silverstein. Oh, well, it, is it public information? Yes, it is. It's public. Okay. It, he's sold a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> she's talked. She's confirmed it, too. Like, they're confirmed first kisses. Did you see Spencer Pratt? I only saw an Instagram reel, but it was like Spencer Pratt walked off the set of Call Her Daddy oh, after she asked him, like, or she was like, well, how does it feel knowing that you're not going to be as relevant? You're never going to be as relevant as you once were. It felt yeah. a little stage that he walked off, yeah. but I'm, like, also living for it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's him cling into the relevancy you know what i'm saying i mean god love him i do uh, love him i love that you think that he's gonna do a fucking carpool fast food moment with us well i haven't asked you know me. i know but I love if there's anything think, about me there's like it. people i think that we're gonna get on the yeah. show and i never get them you need to get whitney cummings on the show she's also about to be a boy mom yes yeah she's having a little I boy i should start to plan when because we're gonna be there soon <gasps> i should try to plan a whitney cummings spencer episode yeah. not like two separate no let's have episodes. them both at the same time and see how it goes <laughs> okay and everybody gets a sword thank you guys so much for watching today's <laughs> episode of the podcast uh we'll be here next wednesday uh make sure you're following all of us on social media christopher elizabeth me i have all of our youtube channels and instagrams linked in the description section below and we'll see you right here next week we love you very much goodbye and, and that's, that's the, the sip, sip. <sighs> I um, think I've bled all over your couch.